Welcome to dealing with materials data. We are looking at the collection analysis and interpretation of data from material science and engineering. We are in module 4 on data processing and we are looking at how to go from data to the underlying distribution. We have known how to estimate properties of a given data set or data series. We can calculate the average and the mean squared deviation and root mean squared deviation from the average of the data. But we know that the data is a sample of the underlying probability distribution. So we want to get the averages of the from the averages of the data, the properties of the probability distribution. So how to go from the quantities that we calculate here to the properties of the probability distribution is something that we are going to discuss in this session. We are going to assume that the data is independent random samples and uh, the best estimate of the mean of the distribution is nothing but the average of the data. Best estimate of the variance of the distribution is slightly larger than the mean squared deviation from average of the data. So if you have the MSD, you multiply by n, divide by n minus 1, then you get the best estimate for the variance of the distribution. For large n, you can see that n and n minus 1 are not going to be too different. And standard deviation of the distribution of course is the square root of the variance. But if this assumption of data being independent is not true, then the variance that you will get will be even larger than what you estimate from this formula. And the estimates of the mean and variance of the distribution from the average and spread of the data, we call this as point estimates because we are just calculating one number. For example, we calculate the average of the data and we say that this is the best estimate for the mean of the distribution. We calculate uh, the MSD and from which we can calculate the variance and we say that uh, that is the best estimate uh, for the variance of the distribution. So these uh, kind of estimates are point estimates, but sometimes we are also interested in giving interval estimates, which we will also discuss in this session as we go along. <clears throat> sometimes we want to know how accurate is the mean that we have estimated. If you have more and more data points, of course the average that you will get from the data will be closer to the true mean of the distribution. The accuracy of the mean is given by um, the standard deviation, but it is not equal to the standard deviation. The average of the data x bar is also a sample from the distribution. So if you generate lots of data and lots of such averages, that will actually help you recover the distribution from which the average itself is sampled. Okay. So, so it is possible to do large number of experiments and to get better estimate for the mean by getting the average from several data sets. Okay. Now variance, again if you assume that the measurements we are making are all independent uh, is the, the, the variance of the average for example, that is the x bar, the variance in that quantity is given by the um, variance that you will calculate and divided by the uh, data points. And standard deviation is nothing but the square root of this, so it is uh, sigma hat by root n, where this delta x squared is uh, the squares of the data and you average it minus the average and you square it. So this is the quantity that we are uh, incorporating here. Uh, this is true only when uh, the statistical variations in the measurements are all independent. If they are not independent, uh, individual fluctuations do not add up like this and so error becomes larger. What happens if the data is correlated? So correlation also should be accounted for when we are calculating the variance and how to do it in a particular scenario is something that we will discuss uh, later in the case studies. Now let us go back to the, uh, the estimating the mean. If the measurements are samples from a normal distribution, so we are making here an assumption about the distribution from which this data is sampled. And uh, since the variance has a spread, we have to look at this quantity root n x bar minus mu by sigma hat or x bar minus mu by sigma hat by root n. And that goes as a t distribution 
uh, with a new degrees of freedom and this degrees of freedom is determined by the total number of observations n minus 1 because we have already calculated the one quantity from the data which is uh, the average. Using t distribution we can give a confidence interval by that what we mean is that we can say with 50 percent probability the mean will lie in this range or with 95 percent probability the mean will lie in this range or with 99 percent probability the mean will lie in this range and so on. These kind of estimates where we are not giving one number for the mean but we are saying what is the range in which the mean will fall is known as interval estimates. So, you can either give point estimates, you can take the data, you can for example average and give that as a uh, maximum likelihood estimate for the mean of the distribution or you can say that okay, uh, the mean will lie in this range uh, with so much of uh, certainty, 90 percent probability that the mean will lie only in this range. So, those kind of things you can make, uh, this is uh, from the t distribution. Uh, Assuming normal this is t distribution because uh, there is uh, the sigma also which has a spread. But suppose if the sigma is known exactly and you do not have to estimate it from the data, then you can put sigma here and you can see that that distribution is actually standard normal. So, it is also possible to estimate from the standard normal distribution the intervals. So, you can say okay, with 90 percent probability the true mean will lie in this range and for that we have to use the uh, standard normal distribution. So, whether it is t or standard normal is determined whether it is sigma hat or sigma. Sigma hat meaning uh, we estimated it from the data, sigma meaning we knew it uh, uh, and we did not calculate it from the data. One can also ask questions about the accuracy of variance. The statistics of variance is statistics of sums of squares of random variables. So, so it is a chi square distribution. The relative standard deviation of variance is 2 by square root n minus 1 and relative standard deviation of standard deviation itself is 1 by root of 2 into n minus 1 and these uh, were obtained from the chi square distribution. Okay. So, it is possible to estimate also the accuracy of the variance. Uh, just by knowing these numbers one can uh, get these uh, numbers fairly easily. For example, um, let us say that uh, uh, we have this uh, conductivity data that we are looking at the mean of which is 101.3 and the standard deviation is 0.1. We have made 20 measurements. So, that means the relative inaccuracy in the variance that 0.1 is 1 by square root 38 and that is 0.16. So, the actual number could be 0 0.1 plus or minus 0 0.016. So, because of which if you include the error then we should report the number as 101.3 plus or minus 0 0.12, but because of the significance of the digits we are not going to go beyond one significant digit because of which it, we will still report it as 0 0.1, but if the significant digits are higher or if this number is not 2 but something like 6 or 7 then the numbers would actually change. So, one way of looking at accuracy of variance is to look at the relative accuracy and report numbers accordingly. So, we will just go to the uh, data that we have and uh, which is the um, data on the conductivity and let us look at the point and interval estimates and let us also try to understand where these estimates are coming from. So, the first thing to do is to uh, we are going to use the t distribution uh, because we are going to assume that the data is uh, uh, normally distributed. So, let us just plot the t distribution and see how it looks like. So, this is the code. So, we are very familiar with this. So, we have uh, a sequence uh, minus 3 to plus 3 and we are going to plot uh, this sequence and uh, the uh, probability density function uh, for that uh, sequence. Uh, with 19 degrees of freedom uh, using the t distribution. So, that is what is plotted and you can see that the t distribution looks like this. Now, from this probability distribution function we know that the area under this curve is 1, uh, which means uh, for the data to lie anywhere between minus infinity to plus infinity in this uh, curve is 1. So, that is 100 percent probability that the data will lie. But that is not very useful. So, uh, for example, if you wanted to know 
95% uh, of data for example will lie in what range and it is symmetric about 0. So, if you take off 0 0.0 to 5 on this side and 0 0.0 to 5 on that side, the remaining region will give you the probability that 90% of the time the data will fall in this range, right. So, that is what we are using to give the interval estimates. To know it a little bit better, let us do the uh, other plotting. So, we have uh, we are going to have two plots, uh, both are from uh, minus 3 to plus 3. One is a t distribution with 19 degrees of freedom, the other one is normal distribution with uh, standard normal with uh, 0 mean and uh, 1 standard uh, deviation. And what we are plotting uh, is the um, is the cumulative probability distribution. So, P t and P norm that is what we are plotting and we are going to draw two vertical lines one is 0 0.025 other one is 0 0.975 ok. So, let us plot this. So, you see that first thing is between t distribution and standard normal distribution uh, there is a small difference. So, let us zoom this and see. So, you can see that in the case of t distribution. Uh, 2.5 percent of the data will fall up to this value. Whereas, in the case of normal it is uh, slightly um, greater than uh, minus 2. Similarly, on the other side 97.5 percent of the data will fall from minus infinity to this value which is slightly greater than 2, but it is slightly smaller than 2 for the normal distribution. In other words, in t distribution and in standard normal distribution between these two lines 95 percent of the data will fall because remaining 2.5 is in this tail and in that tail. Similarly, for standard normal 95 percent of the data will fall in this range and 2.5 is falling here and 2.5 is falling here. This is how we determine the confidence interval. When we say the probability the with 95 percent confidence that the mean will lie in this range. So, this is the range that we are trying to calculate uh, from the given data and then we are giving that range saying that ok. So, the mean should lie in this, uh, the true mean is somewhere and uh, our data mean is somewhere, uh, but that distribution is because we are sampling from the distribution. And depending on whether we know the standard deviation or we do not know the standard deviation, we use either normal or t distribution. So, that is what the idea behind determining the interval estimate is. So, we are looking at the conductivity data and using the t distribution and standard normal distribution, it is possible to estimate the confidence intervals for the true mean for of the conductivity data in what range will it lie. Uh, and to do that we are going to use the same idea. So, if we are given some confidence interval, let us say we want to make sure that 90 percent probability the data should lie in the in this range or 95 like we have taken, which means there is a 2.5 percent probability here and 2.5 percent probability here and same is here. So, which means 5 into 0.5, so that should be the value that you should calculate to know what this point is and uh, point 0 to 5 on this side you should calculate to know where this point is in the t distribution and in the standard normal distribution. So, and if you do then if that alpha is 5 for example 100 into 1 minus alpha. So, alpha is uh, point, uh, 0 0.05 so that is 95 so 95 percent confidence level you can give this. So, in order to do that let us uh, take the first uh, the conductivity copper data and let us do it here. So, you can see what does this uh, um, computation do we are going to read the data and we are going to calculate the average value of the data we know how many data points are there and then we are going to calculate the standard deviation from the data itself. So, this is the standard deviation from the data. Once we have the standard deviation, let us say we want to know what is the 50 percent probability that the mean will lie, what is the range in which the mean will lie if we say 50 percent of the times we have to be right. 
that means the alpha is 0.5 and we will multiply this by 0.5 because we want to have half on this side, half on that side, right? 50 percent is in the middle. So, there is 25 percent on the lower end and 25 percent on the upper end of this uh, tail portions. So, that is why this 0.5 multiplication is there. And we are using t distribution with uh, n minus 1 degrees of freedom because we have calculated the average. So, 1 degree of freedom is gone and uh, t distribution because we are using the uh, standard deviation which we have estimated from the data itself. So, you can get and you will see that the A and B values. So, 101.3045 to 101.3355 in between this the mean will lie and uh, that is with 50 percent probability. Of course, you can make this higher by giving other values. Suppose if you wanted to have um, 90 percent probability, uh, then 10 percent uh, is the alpha value and so 0 0.05, 0 0.05 on either side. So, this 0.5 multiplying 0.1 will take care of that. And if you do that, so if you want to have higher confidence that you want to make sure that not just 50 percent of the times, but 90 percent of the times the data should fall. Obviously, if 90 percent of the times it has to fall, these points are going to become wider. And that is what you see 101.28, 101.35 as compared to the previous value where it was 30 and 33, right? So, and 28 to 35. So, the, the range has expanded and you can do it for other values also. Suppose if you take 0.05, that is basically the value that we have calculated here. So, that is the um, 95 percent uh, confidence interval um, that will be between 101.27 and 101.367. And you can of course calculate uh, still further suppose 99 percent confidence interval you want to get and you will find that that is between 101.2557 and 101.3843. This is all assuming that it is stage distribution. But you can also calculate by assuming that it is a normal distribution in which case we do not need the, all these calculations. We are just going to assume that S is 0.1 let us say and so we do not need any of this right. We have the mean, we have the standard deviation, mean is from the data, standard deviation is assumed to be known and then uh, in that case, we should not use uh, Q uh, T, we should use Q norm and you know this is standard distri uh, div uh, normal distribution. So, it is 0 mean and um, um, 1 standard deviation. So, you can see this is uh, 101.26 to 101.37. Right? It is 2, 5 and 3, 8. So, obviously, T is slightly larger uh, interval than uh, normal. So, 3, 8 has become 3, 7 and uh, 2, 5 has become 2, 6. So, normal obviously has a much uh, shorter uh, interval, um, a little bit shorter. It is not too much uh, short, uh, but, but it is a bit uh, shorter. So, you can do the same thing for normal now with uh, 95 percent. Um, or you can do for uh, 90 percent and as you can see you know 95 to 90 if you go 2736 becomes uh, 2835. So, if you are okay with 50 percent confidence interval for example, let us say we want 0 0.5 <coughs> then we will be between 101.3 and 101.33. So, uh, in this way we can estimate the interval in which the mean will lie with any given level of confidence. So, to summarize we have looked at getting estimates from the data for the probability distribution and uh, there are two that you can get point estimates uh, which is the mean and standard deviation and they can be obtained from the average of the data and spread of the data. But in addition if you assume that you know the distribution from which the data is coming, you can also give confidence levels for the uh, value that you are estimating. You can tell with so much probability the true mean will lie in this range. 
Specifically, we have looked at the case of uh, uh, standard normal and T distribution. And standard normal when the variance is known, T distribution when the variance itself is also calculated from the data. Finally, there is also a way to estimate the uh, relative error in standard deviation which is useful when we are reporting the numbers because typically we report the numbers as uh, mu plus or minus standard deviation and if there are errors in standard deviation which we know from the data we should accommodate that also when reporting the value and we have seen one example. Uh, so we have used this copper conductivity data throughout and we have done all these calculations to know how the uh, point and interval estimation works. So we are going to continue with uh, robust estimation. Uh, where we do not want to assume anything about the uh, underlying distribution of the data uh, and uh, they are rank based there could also be bootstrapping methods. So that we will discuss as part of this uh, session uh, as part of this module in a different session. Thank you.